and let's hit the comma key on our keyboard. Let's go up here to Tool, and let's double click this demo soldier here. So if you double click this Z tool, it's going to throw it into our scene now. Let's hit comma key to get rid of this. And now we have an object. And you're going to see over here we have a subtool count. This has 11 subtools. When we were playing with this one, this has two. And all of these just have one subtool. Oh, this one has two. I forgot we had an extra head in here. So if we go into solo mode, you can see we have an extra head in our scene. And then we have our body. So we have two subtools. This one, if we tap the demo soldier, has 11 subtools. And we have solo mode turned on. You're going to see we have the demo soldier selected. If we go here to the shirt, you'll see the shirt. And in fact, you can use these arrow keys here or the arrow keys on your keyboard to go through and select your different subtools. And you're going to see if you hover over this, you can hold down shift and that'll select your last subtool or hold down shift and that'll select your first subtool. Now these bent arrows are moving your subtools in the layer stack. So right here you'll see our demo soldiers at the very top. If I do the bent down arrow, that'll move that subtool through our stack, but it's still going to keep it selected. So we're in solo mode. It's still selected, but we're moving this down. In fact, if I hold down shift and bent down arrow, it's going to move it all the way to the bottom. If I go out of solo mode here, you can alt tap the shoulder pad and you can hold down shift bent down arrow and shoot that to the bottom too. So now you know your demo soldier and your shoulder pad are right next to each other. And I use this functionality a lot combined with visibility. So let's talk about subtool visibility selections. We have 11 subtools in our scene and I've got a bunch of eyeballs over here. So if I have say, if I alt tap the wristband, you're gonna see it's gonna select that subtool. And if I turn off the eyeball, it's going to turn off visibility, but you're gonna see it's still visible because we have it selected. However, if we select another subtool out here like the goggles or alt tap on any other subtool in our scene, they're gonna disappear because that eyeball is no longer turned on. If I turn that eyeball on, all of a sudden the wrists come back. If I turn them off, they disappear. If, I, if they're off and I select them, they'll come back because they're selected, but if I go and select something else, they'll disappear again. So this is also another really easy way to turn things off. So if it's like, okay, I wanna turn off the goggles in my scene, I'm just gonna alt tap the goggles. You can either turn the eyeball off or touch the nameplate, and that'll toggle the eyeball off as well. And then tap, alt tap any other object, and you'll see they'll disappear. So this is a very easy way to go through here and just turn off things. Just alt tap them, turn off the eyeball, I'll tap that, turn off the eyeball, and then I'll tap anything else, and then here's your visible subtools. Now to bring everything back very quickly, instead of going through here and manually turning on the eyebrow eyeballs one by one, hold down shift, and with any selected subtool, if you hold down shift and turn off the eyeball, if that's the default, that'll turn off all of your subtools. So all of our subtools are off. That's kind of like putting it in solo mode almost. Very similar. So if I go through here and select any subtool, you're gonna see only that subtool is visible because again, all the eyeballs are off. But of course, if you have a subtool selected, it'll show, it, show you its visibility. Now, if I turn on the belt and I turn on the glove, now we have two visible subtools here. And then if I touch the goggles, even though they're not visible, it'll go ahead and show them to you. Now, if I wanna turn on all my subtools, if I hold down shift, and turn on an eyeball for a subtool that doesn't have visibility, you can see that eyeball is off, it's going to turn on the eyeballs for all of your subtools here. So again, to turn off visibility for everything, hold down shift, turn off the eyeball, hold down shift, turn on the eyeball, and that'll toggle visibility on. So what I like to do is if I just wanna see like, okay, show me the body, so alt tap the body, shift, bent up arrow to put it to the top, and then I just wanna see the knee pads as well. Alt tap the knee pads, shift, put it to the top, Hold down shift, turn off visibility for everything, turn this eyeball on, turn this eyeball on, and now I have the body and the knee pads visible. If I wanna turn everything back on, shift, eyeball on, and you're gonna see everything's gonna turn back on, and I can very quickly go through here and alt tap as needed. So the same functionality still applies. If I hit W and we have our gizmo here, we still have move multiple selected or turned on. So I can go through here, I can move all of these subtools at once. In fact, I can rotate and even scale all of my subtools at once, even non-uniformly scale all of my subtools. However, if I hold down Control Shift and tap, that'll hash everything. 
and then I can control shift just the head, just the goggles, and then just move the body and the goggles independently. Control Z to undo if you want. Uh, again, control shift tap to invert that visibility and now all of these are gonna be available. And of course, if you have anything masked in your subtool stack, it'll go ahead and respect that masking as well. So let's go ahead and turn off move multiple. Let's alt tap on the body here. Let's go into solo mode. And there's another uh, bit of functionality with the gizmo that's interesting. If you hold down control and drag on your object, that'll mask along the topology of your object. So if you wanna go through and pose things, this is a very easy way to say mask down the arm, alt tap, on the elbow and then use your camera based rotate to go ahead and rotate along that elbow or you can go through here and you hold down alt and set your pivot move this in a little bit so now this pivot kind of goes down the arm and you can just rotate from that elbow location now just like when we were masking earlier if you go down here to your masking options you're gonna see you have blur and sharpen and all that. You can still do that. So you can hold down control and tap. That'll blur out your mask. You can just keep control tapping and now you'll get a smoother fall off on that bend. Or you can hold down control alt and tap. In fact, make this a little bit easier. Hit Q to go into draw mode. Now control alt tap. That'll go ahead and sharpen that mask up. And then when you hit W and rotate, you'll get a sharper transition on your mask. So again, if we hold down W and control drag down your object, that'll go ahead and mask along your object. Again, if you go in here to preferences, let's close these menus by holding down shift and closing them. If you go under here underneath transpose, you're gonna see you have a mask blur strength and a mask sharpen strength. If you really crank up this mask blur strength and then control drag again, and then control drag down your object, when you let go, it'll automatically blur even more, so you'll get a very smooth uh, bend through here. However, if you go back in here and you say max blur strength is a very small number, now when you drag down and you let go, you'll get a very sharp fall off by default. So now you get a little harsher of a transition there. So you can use that to your advantage as you're going through here and you can dial that in as needed. Now, it's underneath transpose, and uh, I suppose we can go ahead and start talking about transpose now. Now, if you're new to 3D or you're coming from another 3D program, the gizmo is awesome. You can hit W. Uh, it's fairly simple setup. It's very obvious what these things do. Uh, one thing we didn't really talk about, though, is that you, if you hold down Alt and then tap, you hit W and then hold down Alt and kind of tap on your object here. There is some different functionality. If you just tap off, it goes into not gizmo mode and that'll come in handy uh, when we get into Z modeler is probably the most handy way to use this, but uh, just hit W to bring it back. Uh, if you don't like that, give it a chance, but um, that's gonna be underneath your gizmo options here. Gizmo 3D tap to exit gizmo mode is turned on by default. Uh, but again, you can hold down alt to tap. Now, if you alt drag, not you can hold down control drag and you're gonna see it's gonna mask while you while you drag and hold down control. Uh, you can also hold down alt to drag and you see it's gonna kind of snap to your object. To make this a little bit more obvious, let's go back to a cylinder 3D, make poly mesh 3D, turn on poly frame. And then if we hit W, um, if we hold down Alt and drag, you're going to see it's just going to it's going to snap the pivot to that point where you clicked, and then if you hold down Alt, it's going to rotate that pivot right along this plane. And in fact, if you wanted your pivot to go between these two points, hold down Alt and drag, and it'll actually snap to that next point that you click on. Uh, so if you want to go to this point, to this point down here, simply hold down Alt and drag, and it'll snap to these points. So you can get very precise snapping. However, it's a little bit difficult maybe to see that in action. 